And welcome back to the Edo Election 2020 studio, where we'll be giving you live updates from the elections. Adam Zoshomolek complained about the card reader, uh, the, the, I mean, the expansion. We also have Governor Baseki scoring the election low. We'll also listen to reasons shortly. But on the flip side, Izeyamo scores elections high. Joining us live now to discuss these and some other issues is uh, GD Benson, a public affairs Commentator. Good evening, G.D. Benson. Good evening, evening viewers. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, it's good to have you. Thank God for virtual reality now. Sometimes some people can monitor election and even do a, lot, a whole lot of report from the field. Yeah, quite a lot of issues that happened in the last um, uh, few hours where we went on break, and that now we're back. Let's start with uh, the incumbent governor. Um, uh, maybe we should listen to a soundbite from him, then we'll come back. Let's listen to uh, Governor Obaseki on what he said at the polling unit. This would have, it would have been much better organized, um, being a sole day election in the country. This is the only election taking place today. And I expected that with the preparations, which was assured by INEC, uh, voters wouldn't have to spend up to two hours on the queue just trying to uh, cast their votes because it could be quite discouraging and, and could lead to voter apathy. Um, in the last elections, which was the presidential election, there were two points, two voting points, in that, you know, my unit. And it didn't take up, um, up, to two, uh, up to an hour to get uh, my votes cast. Today, you could see that the card readers were very slow and that is the situation across most high voting, pop voting uh, population centers in Oredo from the reports I've gotten to, to now. And, and that for me, that's a bit worrying. Well, I, I wouldn't say disappointment. The Z-parts are supposed to be used later during coalition. I'm just concerned about the process of just getting to vote. I mean, the tedium, the difficulty. If I, as governor, could stand in the queue for more than one and a half hours to cast my vote, you can imagine what other people are going through across ma uh, major voting centers in Oredo. Okay, uh, that was uh, Governor Godwin Obaseki, and it's important that we put it in right perspective. He has not said that he was disappointed. What he said is that uh, he's not impressed with what happened, having to stay for one and a half hours. But let's quickly also get a live feed from our senior correspondent who is right there in Benin to give us the current update. Amadine Uyi, good evening once again. Good evening, Kyle. Ah, it's good to see that uh, you can be seated now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, bring us up to speed. We are getting different signals. Uh, as far as the former governor is concerned, he wasn't too impressed with the uh, reader malfunctioning, but we'll come back to that. But what do you have to say about the current governor not being impressed? He did say that it was not much of a disappointment. Tell us more on that. Uh, for me, I think uh, the politicians will always be the politicians. They will always want to look, uh, uh, blame the process. Meanwhile, they are part and parcel of the process. The truth about the matter is that for me, I don't think there's any big issue. Even if you buy a new car tomorrow, it can give you problem. That is why it is a machine. Uh, but uh, all the politicians who are complaining that they are not impressed or i see that it's a to way of saying they are disappointed uh, but the truth about the matter is uh, they have had opportunity to to advocate for a better electoral process nigerians are crying that we want electronic voting the politicians have a long way to ensure that that happens but but they have not allowed it to happen because the current system profits them in a way they can make a lot of gain from the current system. So what we are talking about is the elections have come and gone. Let's uh, put the blame game behind. INEC has tried its best as an electoral body, as an empire, uh, as an umpire rather. INEC has tried its best to ensure that the polls free, fair and credible. Who are those all, always sabotaging the polls? It's the politicians. 
now the Edo state elections have come, uh, you know, before now, many people predicted it would be an Armageddon. People kept on sending me text message all throughout today. Uh, be careful. Uh, Edo state, we hear that there's going to be war, there's going to be bloodshed. But throughout today, I did not hear one sound of gunshots. I did not see any polling units or polling booths like the last general election being overrun by thugs. All I saw was Edo voters who wanted to exercise their franchise come out en masse to vote. And they did that. Let's hope that their votes will count because it is still the politicians that will, that will try to subvert the process. So the talk of not being impressed or being disappointment, uh, disappointed doesn't hold water because every politician who is in government has enough time to advocate okay. for better electoral process. Amadine. Better electoral process. I, I, I want to still keep you. I want to still keep you before you go back to file more reports. I understand that quite a lot of reports are turned in. And, uh, but before we release you, let me come back to my guests in studio. Uh, let's start with Obaseki. We will play some other sound by. Yeah. What do you make out of that statement he okay. made? Um, there are two things. Um, he said that during the last general elections, in a place like that where a lot of people vote, there were two polling units. And I think that that should have been repeated at a time like this. Um, but having said that, um, the fact that he stood on the queue for one and a half hours, so what? <laughs> he's, not, he's not better than any of the people who were staying on the queues, some of them to vote for him. If anything, he should have demonstrated that he's a servant leader by even going to the back of the queue. What's wrong with being on the queue for one and a half hours? You're the, going to be the greatest winner. or the, You're going to be the ultimate victor if this thing goes your way. So it's not too much to stay on the queue for one and a half hours. That's a cry that is misplaced as far as I'm concerned. Okay, let's also uh, take a listen to uh, the former governor, his predecessor, Adams Oshomole, on what he had to say. Then we'll come back to the studio. So far, so good. Uh, police have provided security. And you can see, contrary to the speculations that people are going to be fighting, the press of police, you can see the people are happy. Nobody is intimidating anybody. And that is what we expected. That will put enemies of democracy to shame. I just pray that the way the police have provided security here, it is the same thing around the state. But in this area, from the report I've got so far, not just here, there is good police presence. And um, the only downside, as I said, is INEC. Because there are three things you need for a credible election. The peaceful atmosphere, it prevails. It's here. Happy people, not aggressive, to celebrate democracy. You can see them smiling, even with babies and so on. We see even elderly people, that one touched me. You know, they're very old men. They are told their card is not working, they should, it's not functioning, the smart card, they have their PBC. They just sit down there, they are not fighting. Why are they no PBC? Why are they no this? Believing that INEC will rectify it and that they will be able to go. You see old women older than my mother, they are seated there on the ground. Ideally, these elderly people should be given the priority to vote because of their age. But we are told their machine is not functioning at all. And it's not even here, they're taking it away. And Alec has not replaced. Even at that, they are not shouting. They are just trusting that Alec will not fail them. I just pray that Alec does his part. And that seems to be a, a twist to what you talked about. But I find something a bit funny there. <laughs> what were those uh, police men and women doing behind him? Uh, well, um, he also needs some level of protection. Don't forget that's that. His, uh, that's his street. Yeah. That's where he grew up. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. He still, he still have some um, antagonists in that place. Don't forget that he's as much a candidate in this race as um, <laughs> um, Izeyamu. So I think the race, the, the race in the eyes of a lot of people is that it's between Adam Zoshiomole and Obaseki that um, Pastor Izeyamu is just the two with which he's fighting um, Godwin Obaseki. Okay, uh, Amadine, uh, let me have your take on this. Uh, looking at, um, you are not just covering the election, you are also, uh, 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 pardon my language, a son of the soil. <laughs> so basically, what do you think was playing out in Edo North, where the former governor voted? 
Uh, Kyle, the, 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 the truth about the matter is he, he made some very salient points. Uh, many factors contribute to a free and fair election. Uh, one important point is a peaceful atmosphere of which, like I said earlier, so many people had been afraid that Edo was going to turn to a battlefield. Now, I told a lot of people, I said, Edo people are not so desperate. Forget all those uh, doomsday predictions by, by so-called prophets of doom. The Edo man is not ready to die for any politician. And we could see today, people came out to vote. Nobody was ready to uh, come to the polling booth with a machete or a knife or a gun. Let's say uh, also the, uh, the efforts of the Oba of Benin played a very key role. Then also you need people to come out and vote because elections can, can easily be rigged if people don't come out to vote. Because if you have 500 people in a polling unit and only 60 come out and vote, it is easy to add the four, remaining 440 to the losing candidates. But when 500 people are supposed to be in a polling unit and 498 come out and vote, you don't have that problem of saying they want to transfer votes uh, of, uh, from one candidate to another. Then the last key factor is the electoral empire, umpire rather. Are they ready to be just? The umpire that is conducting the post, INEC has showed uh, considerable uh, diligence and effort to ensure that it will try to uh, create a level playing field. The problem that uh, 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 residents of Edo had or we are, we are having is the, the statements by certain governors around Edo State for the two major political parties. So when you see a governor leaving his state, coming to rent hotel room, which is full security apparatus, in Edo State, you begin to ask a question, what is the interest? So he has said it, uh, people have been proven wrong. Let us hope that the process, as it was peaceful, it will continue to the okay. end. And the winner will truly emerge because democracy is about the will of the people. Democracy is about the people having the opportunity and having the freedom to be able to choose who they want to choose, even if the person is a bad candidate. As long as the people say, we want a bad candidate, no problem. Because they said that uh, you, you get the, the leader you deserve. So when people come out to say, this is our candidate, it's not anybody's uh, responsibility to try to subvert the candidate because you are passing a judgment on that candidate. Okay. Let the people come out to vote. Okay. But my, the, the, the gentleman in the studio said that it's... It's between the election was more or less like between uh, the outgoing mm -hmm. governor and, uh, or rather the current governor and Adam Sushomle. I don't think so. I think because the truth about the matter is that that was a rhetoric that a certain political party tried to sell to the electorate. And for me, it was a novel idea because so many people bought into it. Whether it was true or not, I don't know. Because before elections, you see political parties try to go back to the, uh, to the draft to bring up things they know will work against the other candidates. I think that polls, uh, the current election is between Governor Godwin Obaseki and Osage Ize Iyamu. Remember, Ize Iyamu had been, he had, he's not just entering the scene. He was campaign director of Oshomole, I think almost two terms. Is a notable politician who also has his own grassroots followership. So, but also, let's also remember the elections are not won on social media. No matter what you see on social media, I, I, I used to tell people when I was in Abuja, my grandmother in the village does not what does not know what is Twitter and does not know what is Facebook. So when you see a thousand comments on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and you, you begin to want to tilt the election in the direction of a certain candidate. But the truth about the matter is that go to the hinterlands. Many of them don't have Android phones. Many of them are not interested whatever you put on Twitter or Facebook. All they know is that they are going to look at what this, go what this candidate has been able to sell to them, and they'll come out and match. Okay. Amadine, 
I, 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 I will still keep you. You will respond to the candidate you cover directly. Then we'll come back to that. I, I need you to react to some of the things he said. That um, those who predicted that it was going to be a free for all, um, that the industry was going to become an Armageddon, um, that they've been disappointed. But then those those um, prophecies didn't come from out of the blues. There were reasons that give rise to that. I mean, we saw how heated the campaign was. We saw the circumstances in which um, um, Ize Yamo got into the APC. We saw the circumstances in which Obaseki left the APC to go to the PDP. So you could tell that Oshomale down, uh, out as chairman of the APC, was going to what? Bring everything down, bring the house down, if I could use those words. But then again, as you said, the intervention of the, the monarch, the above the beginning, in one of the most revered monarchs in human history, I should add, not just in Nigeria, not just in Africa, in human history, played a very significant role. He called them for a truce. He spoke to them about three or four days ago. He issued a, there was a statement issued from his palace encouraging the people to go and cast their votes. Now, that's what we should, those are the kind of things that we should see from traditional rulers, non partisan if I could use that word. Now, ultimately, democracy wins. Edo wins. The people win. And like you said, if the people decide to vote for any, a bad candidate, don't forget that this race is not just between Ize Yamu and Obaseki. There are other players that we don't know. If they do decide to go for whoever they decide to vote for, they are, they are happy to live with okay. the circumstance and the consequences or the benefits. Exactly. Uh, good, good perspective. There are... Um Amadine, please hold it there. We have uh, Samson Itodo joining us in this conversation. Samson Itodo is the executive director of Yaga Africa. Uh, the folks who have been giving us a whole lot of statistics, a preliminary report, and all manner of reports. And may I also put it on record that Yaga Africa has been working in conjunction with uh, the U.S. Uh, mission and also the European mission where the leverage on the information submitted by this group. So Samson, how far? Let me use that language. Well, thank you very much. Um, the election is, is on, and um, we've been observing the commencement of um, proceedings today. And we've just issued our preliminary report, and part of the findings um, in, in the report is, you know, the slow start the voting and um, accreditation of, of voters. Um, there are still logistical challenges that um, we observed. Um, as at 8.30 a.m. this morning, when voting and accreditation was supposed to commence, only 4% um, of, of polling stations um, had reported opening at, at um, 8.30. And this is based on you know, data we received from 90% of our sampled polling units. And what that suggests is um, there was a gap in the logistics um, of these elections. And again, it's, it's also disturbing that um, this perennial problem of, logistic, of logistics management um, is still observed in the course of our elections. The second issue is the flagrant disregard for COVID-19 um, health safety guidelines. You recall in our pre-election statement, um, we indicated um, that we project a spike in the number of COVID-19 cases in the aftermath of these elections. Given the level of non-compliance in this election, it is obvious that you are going to witness a spike because Social distancing was not upheld. Um, in places, we saw people troop to the polling station without their face mask. And that is very concerning. The third issue relates to the conduct of the security agencies. And there, we received reports um, of security agencies intimidating journalists and, and observers, not just the Aiga Africa observers, but also observers of other civil society organizations. And again, that's something we strongly condemn, that election observers um, who are working to protect the sanctity of the electoral process um, are being intimidated and in some cases arrested and detained by the security agencies. 
This is coming against the background of public statements made by the IG of police recognizing INEC accredited observers. And so we don't know where was that breakdown in communication or whether it was intentional on the part of some security agencies to disrupt the work of observers. The last critical point that we have noted um, in this election is the fact that, yes, there are still critical incidents, there are still ballot box matching, but vote buying seem to be, um, seem to have attained astronomic height in this election. Um, and this election is simply about the highest spender because we saw um, political party agents, you know, procuring votes from the people. And this happened in the full glare of security agencies who at no point made any attempt to reprimand or stop that um, criminal act. And, and, and so it appears we're not making progress with respect to addressing its, um, the issue of vote buying of our elections. Okay, Samson, but let, me, you, let, me, let me stay with you because I know you're quite, uh, you have a busy day. Um, uh, prior to this election, the report from Iaga says uh, we have a hot spot in 13 local governments. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a possible violence. Uh, uh, to what effort do you think, in terms of um, what the security agents did to prevent it, or do we have a zero case in your report, which I think should be ready by now? Yeah. Um, we still observed you know, those, those cases um, in, in those 13 local governments. For instance, in Oredo, in Oromia, in Igweben, in Eko, in Ipopaoka, in Asian Northeast, all these locations are locations where we observed some of these infractions and critical incidents. As you know, we rely on data. We're still awaiting the data from our observers and we're cleaning them up. But you know that at the background of, um, or against the background of our reports and reports by other observers, the National Peace Committee and the, the OBA of Benin waded into the escalate the tension. And I can say, and with all sense of responsibility, that the intervention of the OBA and the signing of the National Peace Accord and the campaign that followed after that to hold the parties to account, it helped douse to the tension. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we will still stay with you, but we quickly want to play this sound bite. Just to be fair, uh, let's listen to what uh, Ize Yamu had to say about the process. Then we'll come back to the three of you. Just hold on. A very fair weather. This morning it was drizzling and uh, I was a bit worried that may rain. But uh, you can see the sun has come, so the weather, the, weather, the weather is good. And then, uh, of course, you can also see that uh, it's very peaceful. Uh, there are no talks, people are not, uh, nobody is shooting. And, uh, you know, we are very happy that at least we have uh, a peaceful atmosphere. I'm also happy too that uh, INEC, they have a thermometer here, so they are checking temperatures. We've also tried to give a uh, face mask to our people, and we have encouraged them to come in batches so that they don't uh, crowd this place. You know, I think this kind of PR to be brought because they thought it will rain. If not, we uh, want to avoid people, you know, coming together in large numbers. But I think the process is good. Uh, to make accreditation easy, they have put the, the list of uh, voters on the wall. So you go there first, check for your name, and then when you go to them, you mention the number, which makes accreditation very easy. So we've done that. They've accredited me, you know, gave me the, took me through the card reader, then uh, gave me the ballot paper. And uh, I'm also happy too that where the ballot bus is, they have, uh, you know, a, a cover. So at least you can vote with some level of uh, uh, privacy without people knowing how you voted. So I think that is quite good. Uh, so, you know, if this process I'm seeing here is replicated in all the polling units, uh, I believe that the process uh, will, be, will be very, very fair. And uh, 
we will commend the INEC for a job well done. Okay, that was the governorship candidate of APC. Something I will take one more question to you before you go. But before then, let me confirm what the candidate of APC did say from Amadine. Amadine, I could even hear your voice while the microphone was being stretched. What exactly is the situation? Where, would, did they use thermometer on you too? <laughs> I was not a voter, so there was no need for you uh, using the, the thermometer the because the rule says that before you go into the uh, to cast your vote, I was not there to cast my vote. I was there to observe the process. Now, uh, I would like to uh, give it uh, to uh, in certain areas as well I, where I covered today. Uh, something he told me something. He said that we are waiting for data. I don't like to dispute data. But, you know, sometimes this story is like the, the case of the six, six blind men surrounding the elephant. The one who touches the tail tells you that the elephant is like a rope. The one who touches the side of the stomach tells you that it is like a wall. Another one who touches the leg tells you that the elephant is like a pillar. Everybody judges according to the position and where he is. But I know one, one critical factor in election observation is that when there are incidences, what you actually look at is whether that incidence has uh, the, the uh, uh, whether that incidence is strong enough to affect the outcome of the polls. Let's assume there are about fifty thousand polling units, and you go to go and see that there there was violence in five just five polling units out of fifty. Even the statistic, uh, statisticians will tell you that. You cannot now say because you witness violence in just five polling units. Therefore, the election is not free, is not fair, and is not credible. So uh, Yaga Africa has his observers on the field. We are waiting for their data. So we too, as journalists, will, uh, will be able to look at that data and then uh, make our own decision. But based on what I had seen on ground, all the places I visited, visited today, uh, the, the polls are being conducted in a free and fair, in a, in a peaceful atmosphere. Okay. Many of the voters, because I went as far as asking a lot of the voters, did anybody try to come and induce? A lot of them denied and said no. One even told us that if he had seen them, he would go and hustle to get the money. <laughs> but he was even disappointed that nobody brought money to okay. his polling booth. Amadi. But he has Amadi. started his vote. And he they said may that not trust you. since you know you are uh, the days of the military to today, this has been the most Amadi. peaceful election he has attended. Uh, awesome, awesome. They may not want to disclose to you, but whichever way, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to discard the possibility <laughs> of vote buying. But we understand that Samson has excused himself uh, if he can come back, good for us. Uh, G.D. Benson, we are in Lagos. These two men are in a dual state. What do you make out? Can you read in between lines some of the comments coming from them? Well, I like one of the things that Amadine said, um, which is that it was a position that I took as far back as 2014 um, in the elections, off cycle elections that happened in Ikiti State between Fire and Fire Me. I mean, on the basis of social media, Fire Me won that election. But when people went to the field, we saw what happened. So elections, yes, truly are not won on social media. The number of people on social media is a rather insignificant, again, to use this word, rather insignificant number compared to the number of people who are on ground and those who would vote. The people who, are, who rant and rave on social media, they don't actually vote. Many of them don't even have voters' card. And then they're not even on ground. Yeah, so for those of us in Lagos, I think that a number of other things came into play that we did not know. And which one of them is the the threat by the US and the UK governments to deny some of these key players visas and to revoke the existing visas of those who already have. Um, I, think, I think it was yesterday or the day before, the Secretary of the Government of Kogi State issued a long statement on mm -hmm. that issue. And, I thought they didn't mention names. And, yeah, correct. That's why I'm going next. I mean, and I, as I read the statement from the US Embassy, it didn't mention any state. It didn't mention any name. He just said on account of violence during elections in certain places. So it is only the guilty who will be afraid. Because the people who are going to vote on the streets and in the remote parts of Edo State, again, 
and very unlikely to go to the U.S. Embassy to apply for a visa. <laughs> if you again cast your mind back to when there was a laying of siege by an agency of government at the National Assembly when Sarah Saraki was president of the Senate, Ben Bruce came out that day, and as he was addressing the media, one of the things that he was saying was that they were going to write to the U.S. Embassy and to the U.K. Embassy that they should revoke the visas of some of these people. Cast your mind back again to early 2015, before the elections that brought President Buhari in. The Secretary of State at the time, John Kerry, came to Nigeria and had a meeting with the two major political and gladiators, good. good luck Jonathan and Buhari, and part of the tongue lashing or whipping into line that he gave them was that the US was going to take a position including denial of visa. So <coughs> you can see the power of a US visa or a UK visa in coming to play in our election. And the tempo, that the momentum that had been built up before now was such that the international community was being more than interested in this. The BBC, the UNN, Reuters, AFP, and all of them, they almost have had agents on the ground to observe by themselves. And as, as is practice with Yaga, I'm sure that after the elections are announced, maybe in about 30, 60, or say 90 days, they will issue their own statements in partnership with the EU. And then we will know exactly what went down beyond what we have seen um, on the pages of newspapers and on social media. Awesome. Uh, Amadine, uh, uh, let, let me ask this question so that we can release you to, to, to continue your job. Uh, looking at the process, you know that the process is not over when you talk about the electioneering. Uh, figures were beginning to troop out, and we are going to see some confirmed figures. We are going to see social media figure versus <laughs> INEC figure. And INEC has also uh, forgotten that uh, technology is it, uh, something that has to do with seeing the results and being posted straight away on their website where you will have, a re have it in real time. So do you think um, what more needs to be done to ensure that the process is not truncated or the process is not subverted? Now, uh, the irony of Nigerian elections uh, are such that while the electoral body is trying to ensure that the polls are free, fair, and credible, uh, I sometimes, I honestly do not like to blame INEC because if you look at the nature of our, our politicians, the, 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 the way our political system is built up, you see that there are people who are just sitting down thinking of how to subvert the process. As of today, all Nigerians know that the only guaranteed way to have a free, fair, and credible post is via electronic voting. Remember that when INEC started verifying the number of voters in states and said, you must be verified with a card reader. Some states that had almost 1.5 million registered voters were reduced to almost 600,000. So you see that the electoral body is trying to do its best. So, but it is it is not only the responsibility of INEC. I think uh, the National Assembly has a role to play because the onus falls on them to amend the electoral act and allow for an electronic voting. Then also, it's not just enough to sit down and say Let the National Assembly should do it. The Nigerian citizen. What is the Nigerian citizen doing? Are we putting enough pressure on our legislators to go back there and represent us and not themselves? Because if the world over, it is proven and tested that electronic voting will guarantee free and fair polls. Sometimes the question you are tempted to ask, why is it so difficult for the lawmakers to go there, amend the Electoral Act, and allow for... Uh, electronic voting. So at this point in time, you are asking about how to make the process better. I think every everybody, all hands should be on deck. The Nigerian citizens should begin to demand from their lawmakers that they want electronic voting. And the National Assembly should do due diligence, listening to the voice of the people, listening because the, the effect of a non-credible election is tremendous and it weighs heavily, heavily on the Nigerian electorate because a man who knows that he, he did not get there 
through popular vote. He will not seek to please the millions of people or the hundreds of thousands of people in his community. Instead, he will want to please that person that brought him there. So we are saying that it's everybody's responsibility to ensure that polls become better. The citizens have to demand. The National Assembly have to listen to the demand of the citizens. And then the executive arm have to sign, sign when it is approved. It does not only stop there. Even the judiciary, they have to punish those that subvert Nigeria's electoral exactly. process. Because exactly. if, if the talks have a field day and they know that they will be allowed free, then Togri will not stop during elections. Thank you so much, Amadi Nui, our senior correspondent covering the election in Edo State. Uh, we, we wish you the best. You can go back to the field and give us update in our subsequent bulletins. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah, back to you, Jide. It threw up a whole lot of discussions. Uh, but before then, let me just uh, quickly update our viewers with some of the statistics about a two state election. Uh, we have a total number of 2,210,534 registered voters for the governorship election in the state. Quite a lot of figure there. And out of this figure, we have uh, 1,159,000 of them who uh, are 1, 1, 1, which are men. And for the women, we have 1,000,000 of zero five two two oh nine for women. Then uh, we also understand that 50% of voters are youth between the ages of uh, 18 and 35. That's the definition of youth. And it's quite interesting to see that uh, most of the analysts we've had for this evening section are young people. But I don't think any one of them is less than 35 anyway. <laughs> then talking about the population of Edo, we have uh, about 5 million people in Edo state according to the 2014 estimated population of the Edo state. That tells you that uh, almost half of them are eligible voters, judging by these statistics. Then talking about the total number of polling booths across the state, we have 2,627 and the number of uncollected PVCs. Now, some factors are responsible for this. In some cases, some of them have died, some of them have relocated, and some other funny factors may have taken place. So almost 500,000 of them or did not collect their PVCs. Then we have 14 political parties. Uh, that's uh, 14 candidates that were screened and are judged to be eligible for this election. Out of these 14, 12 of them are men, two are women. Unfortunately, one of the women that we spoke to earlier on, Mabel Obu of uh, ADC, is not, she's not able to participate, she's not able to vote because of ill health. And it was quite informative to hear her say that um, our health matters. Our health means so much to her than electoral uh, fortunes. That was uh, our point. That was our view. We'll talk a bit on that before we round off this segment. Then we have the, whether we like it or not, two contenders. Like they say, there are contenders and there are pretenders. And there are also people who are actually aspiring to be the governor. So what do we make out of all these talking about electronic voting? That, that has been tried two times now at the NBA election. And uh, as much as some people also raise eyebrow, but I think it's largely credible. Uh, when are we going to get in there? Well, um, Edo elections or off-cycle elections altogether is a good opportunity to begin to test the e-voting thing because INEC is able to concentrate rather than during the general elections when it appears that it spreads itself thing. I'd advocated for that, that this should have been a good opportunity the elections that took place in Bayosa and Kogi last year, the one taking place in Edo today, and the one that will take place in Ondo. So, I mean, with those four elections, Aine could make his mistakes and learn preparatory to 2023. Next year, there's still going to be some elections. There's still going to be a Kitty State election. There's going to be Anambra elections. So, all those off cycle elections were a golden opportunity that, again, Aine has missed and dropped the ball. Now, um, 
uh, what's the name? Samson Tudu talked about um, disobedience to COVID-19 protocols. I, I remember that I was on this show one day when with paired, paired with Festus Okoye, and I talked about how feasible it would be to get the political gladiators to, and their supporters to obey the COVID-19 protocols. I don't see that there's any difference in what has happened today than what happened at the rallies. The number of people at each other. Julia, I promise you, okay. I will continue from there. But we okay. have somebody on the standby. Femi Lawson is an it's election observer and has been giving us update since morning. Femi Lawson, has anything changed from what you reported earlier on? Well, uh, good evening. Yeah. Good evening. The few changes uh, we can say as that is that polling has closed in most uh, police stations. Both have closed. And uh, as I speak, uh, election results are being taken from the various polling units to the registration area center, or collection center, where results from polling units are going to be collected tonight for upward movement to the, world, uh, to the local government collection center for eventually getting you know, the state police officer where the final announcement of the winner uh, and uh, so far so good the conduct of the people have remained very commendable in most part of the state. And I think this is uh, one election that we will also appreciate the effort of even so far as as at this moment of time. Okay, Femi, uh, let me still stay with you. Uh, can you put put us through some of the local governments you've visited and uh, do you also hear some feelers from the social media that you might want to discontinence or it is truly what is happening there? Observer deployed the Queen Lucas area of Edo State. And I was personally privileged to observe the election around already government. Uh, uh, Opia, Southeast, local government, and the uh, uh, or, uh, or, uh, or local government, and the Koba, Oha, local government, making five that might exist. One common situation is the out of people across this particular local area. Very massive security. Where, where, where the institute arrangement is perfect. The, I also want to like to ask, uh, ask that we dispel and we disregard some of those rumors that were flying around, especially about the killing of one person, then the, 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 the disruption. So we we'll see fake videos circulating about people's campaign for safety and security agencies. These videos are not from the news. Because we are on the ground here. And uh, I also want to appeal that people should allow INEC to make official declaration of this result. Because some of the results we are beginning to see on the social media are contradictory to some of the results reported by our observers who discussed some of this. So I think uh, people should allow INEC to do its job by you know, announcing the official results of this election. Thank you so much, Femi Lawson. Thank you for your insight on some of this issue. Let me come back to you. Please keep the information coming. We'll be yeah. back hopefully tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me not uh, distort your thoughts, and then uh, you can come back to one of the things Femi said. Yeah, so the point I was making, that the numbers that turned out at each polling unit today is nothing compared to the numbers that you had at each of the rallies, the mega rallies okay. of the major parties, and when they went from town to town or from senatorial district to one another. I don't think that you would, there were any polling booths, maybe you had up to 500 also. And if people who didn't obey um, COVID-19 protocols, you don't blame those people. You blame the people who are supposed to ensure that those things are obeyed. Hmm. Okay, uh, we have just a few more minutes to round up. But looking at the process and looking at the election yeah. uh, critically, uh, my, my, my worry yeah. and part of the criticism that greeted this process yeah. is the huge number of security agents. Yeah. To a large extent, yeah. 
it's like we might need to know the, the, the quantum of our criticism against this process. Is this okay. largely responsible for the peaceful conduct we've had? Or should we continue our rhetoric that let's deploy the security men to the southern Kaduna, to the crisis prone areas, rather than a civic exercise? Yeah. What should be the real narrative? Well, I mean, since you, bring, you brought in the Southern Kaduna perspective, yes, the government failed in um, stemming, the type of, stemming the tide of crisis in that part of the country. I mean, if you had 31,000 policemen to, or, or thereabouts to deploy to Edo State, about half that number would have done a good job in reducing the number of killings or reducing, stopping the skirmishes that happened in Southern Kaduna. So clearly, it shows where the priorities of politicians, the political elite, lies. Um, but it, again, it's good to the extent that um, we've heard very little news or reports of violence or outbreak of any um, skirmishes because. I mean, like um, Hamadine said, he said the Edo person is not ready to die for the average politician. But you see, he's on ground too. He's able to say that. But I mean, the people who are outside talk about things like um, Edo no be Lagos. Um, you, can't, you can't shove aside the Edo people that they're ready, they're ready to die and fight for what have you. Yes, they may be resolute. They may be defiant. But I don't think it will be to the extent of um, throwing, giving away their life because of what people who, at the end of the day, they're going to come back to become friends. And this is, this is the point that I always tell people, that when politicians fight on the pages of newspapers and on TV screens, they still gather when their children are getting married, when their parents die, or when they're celebrating birthday parties, and what have you. So like President Jonathan said in the build up to the 2015 election, that his election is not worth the life or blood of any okay. human being. Uh, um, and this might be my last uh, respondent on this particular segment. We have Nelson Ekujumi, who is also a member of the transition monitoring group monitoring the election. Nelson, I can trust that you've gone round the whole state. Please bring us up to speed. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we as early as some of the local government, what is strong is starting a little bit But that and large, the second year was recommended for personnel as well. Nelson, if you can speak close to your uh, phone, uh, the voice is really breaking. I think it has to do with it. Okay. Continue. Let me. Let me Am I clear now? It's clearer, better. Okay. I said uh, we woke up this morning at APC in some polling station, accreditation and then uh, comments about it. I thought it was, but in some other places, we had delays to the time. So overall, we can commend the next you know, for the you know arrival of the personnel. On, at the police stations in the materials. The turnout was quite impressive, but we will only be able to judge the turnout you know, completely when the results are out. That is when we we'll know whether the, you know, the percentage of the voters that came out to actually compared to those who are competitive. Because as we speak, the state has a population of registered voters. And uh, from the INEC uh, account, we have 1.7 million that collected in PVC. So when you go to uh, our discussion to most of the communities, like uh, my team in local governments like Omegu, uh, Nipoba, Oha, Ego, Obia, Obia, some other local governments like that, you know, the, uh, okay. Arrival of financial stations was the same. As well. Okay. In fact, I must confess to you that just like in 20, the election again in 2020 was turned into a carnival like in the oh, good. States, good. Where people were coming out in groups. Okay. But uh, the uh, um, Nelson, we have with the election is that I, I, I have a duty to. <laughs> Thank, thank you very much, Sorry. Nelson. I, I'm, um, our time is well spent, and I must commend you for your time. 
Thank you for this update, and I got you clearly. And for those of our viewers who were not able to get you, I will never forget that uh, just like 2016, the election turned out to be a carnival-like uh, process. That's quite commendable. Thank you so much, Nelson Ekojimi. We'll connect with you tomorrow when we come back to our Edo 2020 live studio. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Jude, we got to go probably in the next one minute. How, what more should we look out for? What do you think we'll be seeing next morning? Next morning, well, the morning after. Let's put it that way. Okay. Um, I expect that... Um, Whichever party loses, we'll congratulate the winner, as we have seen in certain places. We saw it in Lagos State in 2019. We saw it in, the, I think, Carl De Fiamme was the one who pioneered that initiative by calling um, Ayodele Fayoshe while he was sitting governor and he lost the elections to Fayoshe. So I would expect that whoever loses will wave the olive branch and whoever wins would be magnanimous in victory to say, look, my brother, that's what you are. Because again, this is a this is a situation where you have two Bini brothers, in quote, at war. So the, I'd expect that um, one will wave the olive branch together and be magnanimous in victory and embrace everybody for the, for the progress of Edo State. Thank you so much. Thank you That's GD Benson, public affairs commentator. It's been a very, very productive one hour with you. you. And to all our, our respondents, the Yaga Executive Director, our own Amadine Uyi, for your time, for your insight. And to everyone, all the observers who also joined in, in the discussion, and to the men behind the camera, thank you so much. And to those guys on the punch button, that's the PCR, the MCR, everyone, the producers, done a good job. Let's do better tomorrow, where we will come back to talk some more on the development in Edo 2020. This is where we have to call it a wrap on today's edition. I am Coyote. Lade in the same bag.